Stay tuned. We got Ron our test coming up. Hi, we are sitting here with Ron Artest, a.k.a. Meta World Peace, Laker player, Dancing with the Stars contestant. Let's talk about the orange hair on Dancing yeah. with the Stars. What happened there? Well, you know, just being different. Yeah? You know, I wanted to go in there, and I didn't want to be the regular person that people was expecting or just being a regular. Right. You know, with, the, with the suit. I wanted to be standout-ish, and I was. You did. <laughs> and I got kicked off the first week. Well, I know, I know. I was, I, was, I was a texting maniac. Yes, I know. They kicked me off, but uh, I think people didn't think I was taking it serious. I was, but you I was You were. You were yeah. really, really into it. I was into it, but I wasn't going to practices like that also. I missed The first day, I only did 30 minutes. I was supposed to do five hours. And then well, the that... second day, I did an hour. And yeah. I just, like, my feet started hurting, so I missed like a couple days. Were you wearing those high heel shoes again? Uh, uh, no. That'll make your feet really Sometimes good. I did it without shoes. Really? Yeah, I just with twinkle toes? Use. Yeah, twinkle toes. <laughs> and I did it with my sneakers sometimes. My sneakers were stepping on her high heels. It was all bad. It was all bad. She was amazing, though. You guys look kind of cute. That was yeah. the cutest black and white cookie I've ever seen in my whole yeah, life. Yeah, Oreo cookie. Mm -hmm. All right. You are you're a famous guy. You're an Supposedly. Amaz Supposedly. You're an amazing athlete. Play for the Lakers. I know that there was a point in time when life was really rough for you, when life was hard, when every door was slammed in your face, when there was, when there was no in front of you. So I want to know what it, was it inside of you that was the turning point that made you keep going, even when everything looked like it wasn't going to work out? I mean, I just believe, like, any adversity, the world is so big, and anybody that has a problem, you know, your problem is not even thought of, you know, when you look at the globe, like, you can't even see that person. You know, and myself, I don't think I'm that important. I'm just a little piece of whatever on this big globe. So anytime I have a problem, you know, I can't really see it. It doesn't affect me because when I look at the world as a whole, you know, I'm like, you know, where's that problem at? Hmm. It doesn't even affect me. So anytime I get criticism or anything, that's why I was able to play through those games and play through such a harsh environment. Everybody's telling me not to shoot when everybody's on my back in the media. Right. And then we get to the, to, to, you know, to the playoff games, you know, I don't pay attention to that stuff. What's important to me is bigger than myself, you know, and that's how I get past everything. That is so awesome. I don't yeah. think people see this other side of you. Yeah. You know, they see the guy playing basketball, chasing the guy, you know, with the coke in yeah. the stands. And you told me about that. That is an amazing story. You've got to tell the people watching that you are yeah. now good friends with this guy. Yeah, it's, well. It's, it's it was, unbelievable. It was crazy because the guy, all right, he was, a, he was an alcoholic felon type guy, whatever, you know, he had a bad rep back in Detroit. Right. So at the game, you know, so much going on in the arena, he throws the coke at me, which was beer probably, hits me in the face and I react, I run into the stands, and that's all people saw was that. You Who know? were you playing for at the time? Indiana Indian. Bases. Right, 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 okay. So anyway, I got suspended for the year, and you know, it bothered me for like three years after that. I was in, I was in depression, I was in depression, and um. You don't get paid during this time, no, right? No, you don't get paid during For this time. For a year, that's rough. Yeah, it was rough. They just, you know, and it wasn't even my fault. Like, you know, it was just like, they just poured down the hammer. But it's okay. I expect that out of people, you know, who wants to, you know, get their point across, right? Like I said, I'm just a small, you know, issue in the world that's so much bigger. Right. You know? Um, so I just got by it. And that made people even more mad when it didn't affect me. You know, just because somebody took away everything from me, it doesn't mean it's going to affect me. So anyway, after my couple of years, you know, I was um, still bothered by this incident. I didn't like to be around people, you know? And um, so I saw my psychologist, and she was telling me, you know, work through it, you're going to be okay. And I decided to call him. Wow. So I got his number, I called his house, <laughs> his wife picked up the phone. Right, how'd that go? <laughs> it was crazy. It was crazy. Right, right. What did, what did she say? Who's this? It was crazy. She said, um, 
you know, who is it? I, I say it's Ron Artest. <laughs> and she said, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> she thought it was like a prank, practical joke or something. She Somebody else it calling it. Right? And then, um, and, then she, and then I said, no, it is me, whatever. I told her why I'm calling. And I was calling John, so I, I wanted to do some stuff in Detroit, some good stuff. Why were you calling him? Because you just, what, what, you wanted it to be over, the situation over? Or yeah. You were calling to apologize to him? Or no, of what? course not. Okay, so why yeah. were you calling? What was the reason? I thought it was a good opportunity to give back to kids and let kids see two people that had conflict coming together. You know, one of the other things that people may not know about you is what an amazing dad you are. You know, I mean, you ha your kids are, first of all, they're, they're darling. They're darling, yeah, they but Diamond, you have, to, you have to tell, can you talk about Diamond yeah, a little bit? First of all, she's a little ball of energy. Yeah. She is a firecracker. Yeah. She's a fircracker. You love her. I, you know, I didn't even know, I didn't know she was your daughter. That yeah. was the wild thing. She comes and she sits down next to me. We were at the Staples for some big event. And she sits down next to me and she was wearing a pair of, t she was wearing Skechers. And I was, they were so cute on her. I was like, oh my gosh, those are so cute. And she said, oh yeah. And she puts her feet up on the table and a, a ball of energy. And it's her own energy though. She's, she does. It's she, amazing. But you yeah. know that comes, that comes from her. You know, it's a, you're a direct influence on your kids. Yeah, definitely. Like all my kids are different. They all got different personalities. My boys are a little bit more quiet. Well, I just met him. He's very quiet. He's downstairs yeah. playing uh, Xbox or something. Okay, so yeah. tell everybody about Diamond because this is a mir this is a miracle story. You will not even believe this story. Yeah, but when when Diamond was three, we was started to train her to play basketball and play tennis and everything and to sing and act because she was like this energy and she can do anything. So I said, okay, let's try to help her do anything. Right. And uh, she was doing well, and then she was diagnosed with cancer. And then once she got diagnosed with cancer, we went to the hospital and everything, and we had to stop her from playing basketball because we didn't want her to um, get contact. She, only, she was only born with one kidney that we found out. She was only born with one kidney, one and kidney. she was born. And then you found out she had kidney cancer yeah, she had in that one kidney. In the one kidney. The only one that she had left, she had cancer in it. Right. So it was a tough time. They was trying to find people who match like, kidneys or blood types together. At the same time, they was trying to shrink the tumor because if they were to take the tumor off the kidney, you know, it would have been too much of the kidney missing. Right. You could live with two-thirds of your kidney for your life. You know, um, most people that don't live with their kidney or one of their kidneys go bad, alcoholics. Right. And then, but you never use two kidneys. And she's not on dialysis either. No, she's not on dialysis. It's such a miracle. So they shrunk the tumor and they was able to save two-thirds of her kidney. So we got so lucky. Lucky. And she's back, and she's eight, four years later. She's back, back playing tennis. And she's got a new single. Yeah, doing her music. Her right? music, I love this she's story. She's an amazing girl. I don't understand it, she's, I really don't. You know what, she's divinely inspired. She's supposed mm -hmm. to be here. Yeah. She's supposed to be yours. I mean, your energy is just amazing. Your outlook on life, your yeah. philosophy is, is <laughs> terrific. Did you catch any flack when you gave away your ring? I gave, I gave the ring, I, I raffled it off for charity. You know, uh, so the money I raised through raffle, we gave it to mental health awareness causes, people in Arkansas, Cleveland, Indiana, New York, Chicago, maybe. What's LA. the name of the charity? Um, Excel University is my foundation, and through my foundation, we gave, you know, uh, the, some of the proceeds to, you know, all these different foundations. Uh -huh. And so I raffled my ring off, you know, for mental health causes, and it made $700,000. Get out! And I, and I always told myself, damn, we should have just raffled off. <laughs> <laughs> Seven, no, it was good though. Seven hundred thousand dollars. All from the fans, the fans, all the fans. It was amazing. That is amazing. Yes. You know, you continue to touch me. You continue to, to touch my heart, and I just, uh, I, 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 uh, well, I could go. I could go a different place with that. Yeah. <laughs> Will you please touch I me? You now? Was going to I could have sworn you was going somewhere else. You have a movie or something? Yes, yes, we did a couple movies. I did um a movie called Nine Four Moons. That'll be out like February. Then I did another movie called The Waking. Wow. And then I did another movie um, called Think Like a Man. That one was with, was with uh, Kevin Hart. Think like a man. Think is that kind of like man. walk like a man? No, it's think like, like a think man. Think like a woman. A book, an old book called Think Like a Woman, but this one's called Think Like a Man. And uh, so I did that. Uh huh. And um, I'm working on a couple more. So uh, this Hollywood thing is really catching me by storm, but it's fun. Good. It's fun. Well, I'm so glad you had time to stop by here. Yeah. What's going on? This is Meta World Peace. Shout out to Celebrity Insight with Luann Lee.